Hello, uh, introduction to batteries. Uh, my name is uh, Terence Wong. I will be giving the tutorial uh, for this uh, session on introduction to batteries. We will go through uh, four topics. We will start with the terminology or terms commonly used for batteries. And then we will introduce the electrochemical reactions which take place within any battery. And we will talk about a few basic but important battery characteristics. And during the course of this tutorial, we will use the alkaline battery as an example. So what is a, a battery? This is an energy storage device which we use every day. But most of us perhaps are not so familiar with what's inside a battery. A battery is basically an electrochemical cell. So the key point, the key term here is the cell. And inside every electrochemical cell, two complementary electrochemical half reactions take place. And they take place in two electrodes. These are commonly called the positive and the negative electrodes. So you have two half reactions taking place in each electrode and together they will form a complete redox reaction couple and by redox we mean reduction and oxidation is an abbreviation of those two terms so during the discharge of a battery these redox reactions will take place within the battery and as a result of these reactions an electrical current will be generated by the energy which is discharged during those reactions. In some batteries these electrochemical reactions can be reversed and therefore it is possible to recharge the battery. In every battery, the energy is stored in the form of chemical energy within the entire volume of the electrode. So the energy is essentially stored in the form of a chemical bond in the complete volume of the electrode. This is what makes the battery different from the supercapacitors. In the next few slides, we will introduce some of the basic terminology used for batteries. And we use, by way of a very, very simple example, a primary battery, which you can see on the uh, right side of this uh, slide. The uh, red arrow is pointing towards the anode of the battery. And the definition for the anode is that it is always the negative electrode. And it's negative because electrons are released from this anode during the discharge of the battery. So in other words, negatively charged electrons will come out of the anode when the battery is being used. And that is why it's negative. And electrons are released from the anode because the material of the anode is being oxidized during the discharge in the electrochemical reactions within the battery. So oxidation simply means 
the material is losing electron, is transferring electrons to the cathode, which we will talk about next. So the cathode is the complementary electrode in any battery, and uh, it's uh, indicated by the blue arrow in the uh, photograph on the right side. So this again is by definition, it's always the positive electrode of the battery. So the positive electrode will attract electrons and therefore electrons will always enter the cathode during the discharge of the battery. In other words, when we use the battery to power some device in a circuit, such as a cell phone, the electrons will enter the cathode. And when they enter the cathode, what the electrons will do is to reduce the material in the cathode in an electrochemical reaction. So most of us are very familiar with uh, positive and negative electrodes. But within the any battery, there are two other very important components which we may not be so familiar with. And the first one is the uh, electrolyte, which is uh, shown on the, the left there. So the electrolyte is a very essential part of any battery. And essentially, is an ionically conducting uh, medium. Usually it's in the form of a, a paste, a semi-solid paste, and it's located between the cathode and the anode. And by ionically conducting medium, what we mean is that the electrical current is carried not by the electrons, but by positive and negative ions within the electrolytes. So how do we prepare the electrolyte? There are various ways to do this, but usually what we do is we take a, a salt, such as uh, potassium chloride, could even be sodium chloride, which contains positive and negative ions. So in potassium chloride, the potassium will be the positive ions, and the chloride ions will be the negative ions. And you dissolve this salt in a solvent, right, a liquid, and what you will get is an ionically conducting uh, electrolyte. And this must be present between the cathode and the anode. The fourth component of any battery is the separator. And uh, as the name suggests, the separator is used to separate the cathode and the anode of the battery. And it's really just a permeable membrane which allows the ions to pass through the pores, the little holes of the membrane freely. But because the separator is also an electrical insulator. So it will prevent the anode and cathode from short-circuiting each other. In other words, the separator will not allow electrons to pass through, and therefore the electrons have to go through the external circuit. So here is an example of a very simple battery. Uh, it's called the Leclanche uh, battery. It's more commonly uh, known as the uh, AA battery. This is an example of a primary battery. And by primary battery, we mean it can only be used once. So once you discharge this type of battery, it has to be replaced. It can never be recharged. And uh, like what we said earlier on, 
the Leclanche battery has an anode which is negative and it has a cathode which is positive. The anode in the case of the Leclanche battery is made of zinc metal and this is uh, indicated by the red region in the schematic diagram below. The positive uh, electrode is made from a compound called manganese 4 oxide or MnO2 and this is indicated by the uh, amber region in this uh, schematic diagram. And the electrolyte in the Leclanche battery is made from ammonium chloride dissolved in water. So this is what's called an aqueous electrolyte. If we look at this uh, schematic diagram, we also see two current collectors. So these are simply electrical conductors, which allows the electrons to enter or leave the battery uh, easily without uh, losing its uh, energy. So as we mentioned in the uh, first uh, slide, there are these electrochemical reactions taking place within any battery. And here we just show schematically what are the electrochemical reactions taking place within the Leclanche battery. So essentially in any chemical reaction we start with the reactants. So these are represented by the chemical uh, symbols on the left side of the reactions and uh, they will interact with each other and generate the products which are shown by the chemical symbols on the right hand side of the uh, reactions. And uh, the difference between an ordinary chemical reaction and an electrochemical reaction is that there is always electron transfer and uh, this is indicated by the symbol E in the uh, reactions of the anode and the cathode. The electrons are important because this transfer of electrons from the anode to the cathode is what gives us this electrical current which we can uh, used to drive an electronic circuit for whatever application we need to use. So in this case of the Leclanche battery, the anode is being oxidized. We can see that the zinc is losing two electrons per atom to the zinc two plus ions. And the corresponding reaction on the cathode is a reduction so the two electrons from the anode is used to reduce the manganese 4 oxide to a compound called manganese oxide hydroxide. One unusual feature of the Leclanche battery is that the electrolyte also participates in the electrochemical reaction. And this is shown at the, uh, by the bottom equation. So what you see here is that the zinc will react with the salt in the electrolyte or ammonium chloride and hydroxide ions to generate zinc ammonium uh, chloride. And you can see the overall reaction on the third line. So this is the complete reaction involving the anode, cathode and the electrolyte.